And with the challenge of the new coronavirus, I want you to know that my team is up to the task, that we are prepared, and we're ready to move North Carolina forward. And I'll tell you this, it has been the honor of my life to serve as governor of the greatest state in this country. You know, I grew up in eastern North Carolina, working on the farm in the summertime. My mom, a public school teacher, and it was there I learned my values. A deep faith in God, a duty to serve, a charge to help others. But I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be up here leading the state that I love. And really, never in my wildest dreams what I thought, could I have thought that I would have had such a wonderful wife as the First Lady of North Carolina, Kristen Cooper. Hey guys, she's been to 83 counties so far, coming to a county near you. And I'm so grateful for my wonderful daughters. Two of them are here tonight, Hillary and Natalie. Yeah. And Claire's up in school in Maryland, so hi, Claire. I'll tell you, before I was governor, I was elected as attorney general for 16 years. And there, we fixed our crime lab and helped solve cold cases to put violent criminals away and free the innocent. We ran payday lenders out of our state. We fought mortgage fraudsters and scammers and corporate polluters. We fought for people who couldn't fight for themselves. I love serving as the state's top law enforcement officer, and I really didn't plan to run for anything else. But then things changed in our state. And in 2010, we got ourselves a legislature that gerrymandered themselves into a supermajority. And then in 2012, we got a governor who rubber stamped every bad thing they did. Shortchanging our public schools, denying health care to over half a million people, flushing out a crazy bathroom bill, slashing taxes for the rich and corporations, weakening laws to protect our air and water, passing the worst voter suppression in the country. We don't have enough time to list them all. So I believed that I needed to step up and run for governor. And you believed in me. And together, we won this governor's race in 2016. And I am proud to accept this party's nomination for governor in 2020. In 2016, we started riding the ship. We reached across the aisle and push them to get some things done. We repealed the bathroom bill. We got, we got funding for hurricane victims. We installed a better way to fund our roads and we made progress on the opioid crisis, reducing the number of overdose deaths. But we remained unflinching, unflinching in our demands for investments in public education and closing that health care coverage gap. And despite Republican hostility, we stood up to the president against offshore drilling. Not off our coast, you don't. We helped thousands of students get better job with community college finish line grants. I ordered paid parental leave for state employees. I ordered a clean energy plan to fight climate change and get us good paying jobs in the clean energy sector. I appointed the most qualified and diverse cabinet in the history of our state because I believe the state government should look like the people that it serves and protects. I appointed the most independent the smartest 
and most diverse array of judges across our state, including the first black woman as Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, Sherry Beasley. I helped create tens of thousands of new jobs in North Carolina because we focused on education and workforce and we sent the message across the world that North Carolina values. All right, you're listening to Governor Roy Cooper, who is the incumbent and current governor. No surprises here that he uh, will will be the, the, the candidate to face off the Republican. And in, and in this, what marks uh, this to me really is that he is firing back. He mm -hmm. sounds like yeah. he is really going to campaign this time because last time... Yeah. It was just a matter of, of, of seeing what happened with Pat McCrory. Let's